Hello, welcome to video V3C. In this lecture, I'll introduce the tools needed to accommodate compression of the public key component T. These tools are rather complicated and they only yield a modest decrease in public key size. Nonetheless, compression of T is mandated in FIPS 204, so it's important to understand these tools in order to fully understand standardized dilithium. The coefficients of the polynomials in the public key component T are rounded using power to round, which is similar to, but not quite the same, as the modified decomposed routine that will be presented later in this video. Power to round takes as input an integer r between 0 and q minus 1, and the positive integer d that is less than the bit length of q. So d is less than 23, since dilithium uses a 23-bit prime q. The output of power to round is a pair of integers r1, r0, such that r equals r1 times 2 to the d plus r0. R0 is defined to be R symmetric mod 2 to the d. So R0 is greater than minus 2 to the d minus 1 and at most 2 to the d minus 1. R1 is defined to be R minus R0 divided by 2 to the d. So R1 is a non-negative integer at most equal to q minus 1 over 2 to the d rounded up. I'll call R0 the low order bits of R and R1 the high order bits of R. You shouldn't confuse low order bits and high order bits with low bits and high bits that were defined earlier using the decompose function. Here is an example. Let's take Q to be 23, a 5 bit integer, and D to be 3. Here are the outputs of power to round for all integers R between 0 and Q minus 1. You can see that the low order bits R0 take on values from minus 3 to 4, whereas the high order bits R1 take on values from 0 to 3. Power to round can be extended to polynomials by applying it to the coefficients of the polynomial. For example, consider the ring RQ of polynomials over Z23 modulo x to the 4 plus 1 and let's take d to be 3. Let t be this polynomial in our q. Power to round t comma d produces polynomials t1 and t0, such that t1 times 2 to the d plus t0 equals t. The coefficients of t1 are the high order bits of the corresponding coefficients of t. The coefficients of t0 are the low order bits of the corresponding coefficients of t. For example, the coefficient of x cubed in t is 19. So the coefficient of x cubed in t1 is 2, and the coefficient of x cubed in t0 is 3. Power to round can also be extended to vectors of polynomials in the module RQK by applying it to each polynomial in a vector. Roughly speaking, compressing t means dropping the d low order bits of each coefficient of each polynomial in t. More precisely, one uses power to round to write t as t1 times 2 to the d plus t0. Then, t1 is included in the public verification key instead of t and T0 is retained in the private signing key. For the MLDSA87 parameter set, we have K equals 8 and D equals 13. Hence, the size of the length 8 polynomial vector T is 8 times 256 times 23 bits, or 5,888 bytes, whereas the size of T1 is 8 times 256 times 10 bits, or 2,560 bytes. Omitting T0 from the verification key introduces some complications in signature generation and verification. I'll address these complications next. 
Recall that the verifier needs to compute AZ minus CT in order to recover the high bits of W minus CS2. Unfortunately, the verifier only knows T1 and not T0. So, instead of computing AZ minus CT, the verifier computes AZ minus CT1 times 2 to the D, which equals AZ minus C times T minus T0, which is equal to W minus CS2 plus CT0 after replacing AZ minus CT by W minus CS2. The verifier would like to add minus CT0 to the last quantity to get W minus CS2. However, the verifier doesn't know T0. But note that the verifier doesn't need W minus CS2, but only its high bits. This problem of computing the high bits of W minus CS2 without knowing T0 can be solved with hint bits. Let me explain. One can expect that the polynomial vector minus CT0 has infinity norm at most gamma 2 with high probability. This point is worth expanding on, so let me do so. For example, in the MLDSA87 parameter set, we have d equals 13, tau equals 60, and gamma 2 equals 262,144. Exactly 60 of the 256 coefficients of the polynomial minus c are minus 1 or plus 1, and the other coefficients are 0. Also, the coefficients of the polynomial in the vector t0, let's call the polynomial u, has mod sq coefficients in the interval between minus 2 to the d minus 1 and 2 to the d minus 1. So between minus 4095 and 4096 when d equals 13. So the polynomial product minus c times u has coefficients between minus 60 times 4095 and 60 times 4096. So in this interval. The interval is contained in the interval from minus gamma 2 to gamma 2, i.e. from minus 262144 to 262144. So for the MLDSA 87 parameter set, the coefficients of minus CT0 are guaranteed to be at most gamma 2 in absolute value. The dilithium parameters were selected so that with probability very close to 1, and perhaps even equal to 1, all coefficients of minus CT0 in their mod SQ representation are between minus gamma 2 and plus gamma 2. Now, if minus CT0 indeed has infinity norm at most gamma 2, then adding minus CT0 to W minus CS2 plus CT0 will affect the high bits of W minus CS2 plus CT0 by either minus 1 or 0 or plus 1. You can think of this as a carry digit that is either minus 1, 0, or plus 1. To enable the verifier to compute the high bits of W minus CS2 from W minus CS2 plus CT0 without knowledge of T0, the signer includes some hint bits in the signature. These hint bits are essentially the carry digits when minus CT0 is added to W minus CS2 plus CT0. Recall the definition of high bits and low bits. Alpha is an even divisor of Q minus 1, and M is Q minus 1 over alpha. The alpha low bits R0 of an integer R between 0 and Q minus 1 is defined to be R mod S alpha. And the alpha high bits R1 of R is defined to be R minus R0 divided by alpha. Recall that R1 alpha is the closest multiple of alpha to R, with ties broken by choosing the smaller multiple. Now, let Z be an integer between minus gamma 2 and gamma 2. A hint bit H should allow one to compute 
the alpha hybits of R plus Z from R and H without knowledge of Z. So the hint bit should tell us whether the carry digit when Z is added to R is minus one, zero, or plus one. However, this may not be possible since there are only two bits zero and one and there are three carry digits, minus one, zero, and plus one. Consider the case when Q equals 21 and alpha is four, so gamma two is two and M is five. Let R be an integer between zero and 18. Notice that either the high bits of R change when Z equals two is added to R, or the high bits of R change when Z equals minus two is added to R but not both. For example, consider R equals six with high bits one. If two is added to six to get eight, then the high bits change to two. Whereas if minus two is added to six, then the high bits are unchanged. This property isn't true for R equals 19 and R equals 20. For example, if two is added to 20, then the high bits change from five to zero. And if minus two is added to 20, then the high bits change from five to four. The problem is that the multiples M alpha and zero alpha, so 20 and zero in the example, are side by side. To fix this, we slightly change the definition of high bits and low bits. Let's return to the example with Q equals 21 alpha equals four and M equals five. We'll change the high bits, low bits of R equals 20 from five zero to zero minus one. Note that 20 is congruent to zero times alpha minus one modulo 21. And we'll change the high bits, low bits of R equals 19 from five minus one to zero minus two. Note that 19 is congruent to zero times alpha minus two modulo 21. Now, R equals 19 and R equals 20 have the following desired property. Either the high bits of R change when Z equals two is added to R, or the high bits of R change when Z equals minus two is added to R, but not both. So we compute R0 as before, as R mod S alpha. R1 is also computed as before, namely R1 equals R minus R0 divided by alpha. However, if R minus R0 equals Q minus one, or equivalently R1 equals M, this is a problematic case. Then we set R1 to be zero and decrease R0 by one. Note that R0 can now be as small as minus alpha over two, so minus two in the example. And R1 is strictly less than M, so less than five in the example. Also, we now have R equals R1 times alpha plus R0 mod Q. The mod Q is now needed. This is the version of decompose high bits and low bits that is used in the full dilithium signature scheme. We're now ready to define the hint bits and how they are used in signature verification. Make hint has three inputs, an integer r between zero and q minus one, a number z between minus alpha over two and alpha over two, and alpha, which is an even divisor of q minus one. Then the hint bit H is defined to be one if the alpha high bits of R plus Z are different from the alpha high bits of R and zero otherwise. Use hint has three inputs, a hint bit H, an integer R between zero and Q minus one and alpha. It returns the alpha high bits of R plus Z. Note that use hint doesn't explicitly use the number Z. One first computes the high bits R1 and low bits R0 of R 
using the decompose function. If h equals 1 and r0 is positive, then the high bits of r plus z must be 1 more than the high bits of r, modulo m. So r1 plus 1 mod m is returned. And if h equals 1 and r0 is non-positive, then the high bits of r plus z must be 1 less than the high bits of r, modulo m. So this time r1 minus 1 modulo m is returned. Finally, if h equals 0, then r1 is returned since the high bits of r plus z are the same as the high bits of r. The claim is that if make hint outputs a hint bit h, then use hint of h, r, and alpha outputs the high bits of r plus z. Make hint and use hint extend naturally to polynomials in RQ and vectors of polynomials in the module RQL by applying the routines to the coefficients of the polynomials. To accommodate compression of t, the signer verifies that the infinity norm of minus ct0 is at most gamma 2, and then appends a hint vector h to the signature. The hint vector is make hint of minus ct0, w minus cs2 plus ct0, and 2 gamma 2. The hint vector allows the verifier to compute the 2 gamma 2 high bits of w minus cs2 by first computing az minus ct1 times 2 to the d, and then applying the use hint function. Since az minus ct1 2 to the d equals w minus cs2 plus ct0, w1 primed is equal to the 2 gamma 2 high bits of w minus cs2 as desired.